<laughs> this idea we have called missing millions at least that's what i've dubbed it that's what i've called it yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that was your that was yours yes now today we're going to get into this but patrick why don't you why don't you give us a bit of backstory a bit of backdrop of why we're coming up with this segment this by the way this segment's going to be featured at acre as well so yeah. it, it's going to be an extension of this segment this is kind of a little bit of a, an intro to it but uh what's the backstory to why we're doing this patrick in terms of this segment called missing millions yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's first off, it's intended to be fun by shining a light on some of the things that, you know, we, we step over, and we sometimes don't pay attention to what we're stepping over. And, uh, you know, of course, in, in the world of rain 27 years later, really, ultimately supporting and coaching thousands of people to invest in real estate, one of the things that we consistently see is people who are stuck thinking they need to know more and, and need more strategies, need, you know, need more tactics and, and they get in their own way of having success. But as they're sitting there, opportunities come and opportunities go. And uh, often I recognize that people don't take the time to actually think about what is that really costing? You know, you know, we're trying to grow a financial future and security and certainty and all of the language that we wrap around it because you know it's our beliefs it's our why it's all of these things but the the topic and the discussion that you and i had came up of what is it really costing to sit on the sidelines to be stuck to have a reason to not take action and the reality of it is is it's it's millions and the other thing too is a couple extensions to that the first thing is is you're, you're going to hear today some stories like I got, I got, it was, it, I mean, first of all, this could be, it's not going to be, but this could be a super depressing segment because <laughs> I thought about it. I, got, yeah. I thought about it, Patrick, for like uh, three minutes today. And I had four deals, millions of dollars missed because of stuff, which I'll talk about. But one, so one of the things I'm really excited about is people are going to be able to see our behind the scenes on the deals we missed. And, and, Every, you know, we're everyday people, just like every other in that real estate investor out there. We make mistakes. We make, we miss deals. We miss millions. You're going to hear some of those stories. The other thing is, I think people are going to get the realization, like I, I'm starting to, is why always be looking on the other side of the fence? Why always be looking for the next thing when you've missed so many things? Like, let's just, let's just water our own side, our own grass and not consider the other side of the fence so much. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's true. Very, very true. So do you, so, so Patrick, I'll let you think about your missing millions um, story that you're going to share this morning. But I'll tell you this, I, this morning I got up early and I, uh, I went for my walk, my morning walk, which I decided to get some blood flow and go down to the uh, store, which is about, you know, half a kilometer away, maybe 0.7 kilometers away, beautiful nature trail. And as I'm walking, I started thinking about this segment we're doing today. And I started thinking, okay, I got to think of a story. I'm sure I don't have that many, but I'm going to have to dig. That's what I'm, that's a self-talk going through my mind. Then I literally come out of the house, literally open the door two feet outside. And I think, oh shoot, there's the first, there's the first one. I have a lot beside me that I could have bought four years ago for a hundred thousand dollars. And now I'm going to end up buying it. It's going to be $180,000. <laughs> so there's $20,000 a year. <laughs> and it's not like I couldn't have bought it. I could have bought it. So it's like, and I just. Why didn't you though? But why, think about it. Why didn't you buy it? That's, that's a great question. So, so first of all, at the time, um, I, I was already, I was building, I was in the development of three properties at the same time while I built my house. So I was, I was quite stretched. And, and if I think back and I got to go pretty deep in my memory banks, as you would say, but if I, if I think back, I wasn't, so I was somewhat stretched financially, but I was really stretched mentally. Yeah. You know, I had about $1.8 million of development going on at the same time while my company, a marketing company was expand, expanding all over the, the world. I was on the road to you know, 14 to 20 days of every month. So I wasn't home very much to manage these projects. So if you combine my company, which was growing at that point, we were probably growing from about 8 million a year to about 12 million a year. Like that's the trajectory we were on. Yeah. 
So that was very aggressive. I had a lot of mental energy and emotional energy into that. And then at the same time, I had this $1.8 million of, of uh, development. That was my side hustle, you know, like the odd day here and there. So when the offer came in and, and, and Patrick, it was actually um, the gentleman who owns the property to this day came to me and just said, Hey, here's a, do you want to buy my property? And it was like, it could have been so easy, simple, no problem. And it was the same price that I had paid for my lot. So, so immediately I came up with excuses in my mind. And it's funny, like I'm trained in this stuff, Patrick. I should know better. <laughs> but my, my mind threw up excuses, literally threw up excuses in my mind as to why this wasn't a good deal. Yeah. The lot was a little narrower than mine. Uh, it probably requires minor variances in order to do a development, which would probably add somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars of costs. I had just found out that the lot I was building on had non-native soil, which is a twenty to thirty thousand uh, dollar cost because you have to bring in engineered soil. So all of this added up to this is a this is not even close to a good deal. This is ridiculous. This guy's out of control. And, and I'm not buying this thing. And I never thought about it twice again until two years ago when I was sitting on my deck thinking, well, now that was a stupid move. <laughs> well, what's really funny about it is just a piece of land. Like it would have literally been parking a hundred grand. You would have paid some tax taxes on it annually, but you didn't have to do anything with it. Dude, dude. So let me make this story even worse for me. Uh, actually it was that very same year. I think this, I think it was that same. No, it wasn't the same year. Two years later, we buy a piece of land. We, we bought it for a hundred, we bought it for 98,000. So we parked a hundred grand into a piece of land and I'm about to sell that piece of land for 200 grand. Yeah. So yeah. So don't, <laughs> dude, you don't need to make me feel worse, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Hey, well, listen, I mean, I mean, the thing about all of this is that, you know, for, for us, um, you know, in, in terms of this conversation, the context of this conversation is, you know, if you're listening and, and watching this particular post, the, the thing to do is sit back and anchor and ask yourself, what does it cost you to be in, in action? Like, what is it costing you to sit on the sidelines look for another reason, another tactic. You know, you shared this with me. It's JG, you know, wisdom or J genius. But I, I mean, really, you shared with me something that was really quite, it landed for me in a really cool way, which is you can't necessarily make a decision from a standstill or you can't develop something standing still. You actually have to move forward. You have to make a decision to go forward and things evolve and change. And you're then making decisions in the moment. We get stuck in the don't move until it looks like it's going to be perfect. And it's never that way anyhow. You know, you and I both learned that in business and in real estate. Yeah. You know, so the question for our viewers in this particular segment is to ask yourself, what is the true cost of me sitting on my ass and not taking action, making all of the excuses that you want to make? Now, some of the stuff's in hindsight. So I'll share my, my story. And this was early on. I have a legitimate excuse. Like I was a total rookie investor. And, um, but which, is why, which is why we're doing this, right, Patrick? I mean, yeah. we're doing this so people can see that, A, we make mistakes. B, we've made rookie moves. C, we've recovered. We've moved on. It's okay. And yeah. you're going to move on too. So uh, please give me the story. I can't wait to hear this. Yeah, no, so... This was quite early on. This was, uh, you know, shortly after I joined Rain. So this would have been back in 2001-ish. And um, so Edmonton, that area is really, it's really starting to jive. Like we can see the future pretty clear. We looked at the economic fundamentals, the ripple outside of Edmonton. And there's a, a small center uh, city town outside of Edmonton called Devon, Alberta. And so if you're from Alberta, you will know Devon, of course. Well, in Devon at the time, there was a property of, I want to say it was eight units, eight or nine units, and built really well, great location, really nice townhouse units, side by sides. And the whole deal was a half a million bucks, 500 grand. And I, I viewed them, I walked through them, paved parking, like it was 
a really sweet setup. And I went into analysis. And I went into Par analysis. Paralysis by analysis? Yeah, but it was, and it was a FISBO. So it's another guy. He just wanted, like, he was the guy who developed it, built it, probably had, you know, had a spread, was making some money, had to get out. And um, I was working on it. And I put all the math together. I go, yes, this is a home run. I phoned him. I go, hey, I'm ready to put an offer on the property. He literally said, I'm sitting with the guy that I just sold the property to. Oh, no. I went, what? <laughs> and he goes, no. He, so I says, would you tell me what the deal was? He almost was like the identical offer that I was about to submit or was prepared to submit. It was like, so it was like he stole my notes, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, so that deal didn't get done. Well, <laughs> excuse me. You know, I don't know. I know that about six years later, those units were, I, I want to say 800,000 because it was, at the time it was really cranking Edmonton and was really in the ripple effect, of course, with what happens, transportation, all this stuff. Now, you know, years later, Devin wasn't the, you know, it kind of lost some of its luster because of a whole bunch of reasons, but those particular units to this day would be cash flowing like crazy, would have been still in great shape. And I don't even want to think about what ultimately that, Awesome. Well, okay. So let's just pause in order to in order to hammer this lesson home for, for our viewers. We have to and, and I did this math and it's super painful, ladies and gentlemen that are listening to this. It, this is a painful process, but you got to do it. Because what Patrick just said is exactly what we all say, which is I don't even want to think about how much I missed. <laughs> if you don't fully understand the error, then then you're going to make it again. So I just ran the math, Patrick, I'm depressed as all hell right now. Yeah. I just ran the math on that piece of land. So I could have bought it for 100. He now wants 180. So the average person would be thinking, the average non sophisticated real estate investor would be thinking, okay, you're going to pay an extra 80 grand for that. Okay. That you're going to pay an extra 80 grand. So you lost $80,000. But that is not the case. That is not the case. No. I built right beside it. And in the last four years, that property I built has be between uh, appreciation, cash flow, and mortgage pay down, I'm up 300K on that property. Which means if I would have done the same deal right beside me, I would be up 300K. I mean, that, that's plus, I would have made 80 to 100K on the land. So total, this is a $400,000 mistake I made. Yeah. Ouch. That hurts. You know, it, it's, it's, you know, the, I mean, ultimately the reason we share this with, you know, it, yeah, I, I'm not, a little, not to I'm depress actually, everybody. I'm a, yeah, but I, I'm actually a little embarrassed about it, you know, because I've done this exercise before in, in a, in a kind of in a past life. And I have literally added and done the math and I've walked away or missed, stepped away, found excuses, probably 5 million plus. Easy, Patrick. I know. I don't want to. With your, with your longevity. I have my longevity, Easy. given how old I am. Yeah, no, it's, I'm a little bit, I'm, I honestly, I'm a little bit embarrassed. You are, you are down eight figures, bro. You're yeah. down eight figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True so, fact. So back on the Freedom 95 plan. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so and, and this is actually a super important lesson. And I could chat about this all day. And don't forget, I told you this morning, I went for a walk, 10 minutes. And then along my road, my route to where I was going, which is only important half a kilometer, I ran across four buildings that I didn't act on that if I would have, this is only one of them. So I've only shared one story and, and we'll, I'll share more as we go forward at Acre in Vancouver, I'll share more. But the fact is this, Patrick, I, I learned this important lesson when I was younger, which is I, I call it time will pass principle. Now I have, I didn't pick this up from anybody. It's just something that I, that I learned, so to speak, and called it time will pass, which is, it goes both sides. So time will pass in terms of if you make a, if, if you don't do action today, don't take some sort of action today, time will pass and nothing will happen. If you do take action today, yes, it may be difficult. Yes, it may be painful. Yes, there's a price to pay. I talk about that. I'll be speaking in 30 minutes 
to a, a group of 300 real estate investors who either have property, want property yeah. um, for our what winning in real estate event that's starting in 30 minutes. And, and I'm going to tell them time will, time will pass and there's a price to pay. You have to be willing to pay that price, but it's all going to be okay as you, as you go forward, if you make up these excuses, oh, it's so painful. Well, so let's, you know what we should do? Let's turn this into a little game. We're going to talk about Acre. We're going to be I, I want about people it. to comment, by the way. I want people to comment below with some of their stories. I yeah, want to know what that. your stories let's are. Like, that. help but me let's, better people. Uh, yeah, and how about come to Acre with your best story, and then we'll do a little, we'll do it we'll do a little thing. Yes. The whole point of it is, is that beyond that, I mean, we're talking about a lot of experience collectively you and I've had, but we've seen it time and time again, just the nature of what we do as, as coaches and, 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 you know, educators and the, the relationship we have with so many entrepreneurs and so many real estate investors. Um, but the thing is, is that what has made rain the longest standing kind of, business when it comes to supporting that success there's three three components we know what it is right and we talk about it we hashtag it and that is clearly community culture environment set yourself up to win by immersing yourself in that surround yourself with like-minded individuals how many thousands of times have i heard members come up to me and go patrick I come to meetings every month. I engage with rain every month because it's like, I need a dose of people who think like I think because I'm surrounded by people who tell me I'm crazy, naysayers, family who think I'm out of my mind and taking too huge a risk. But that's all. While you're listening to that chatter, you're literally compromising a financial future. You're, 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 what, what is the name of this? Miss Millions? Missing, missing Millions. <laughs> you're, you could be Missing Millions. No, you right? are. Mi you're not. Could be. You no, are you Missing are. Millions. <laughs> you are. So, you know, so that's all to say. That's, I mean, that was the inspiration behind this segment because we're always looking for ways to get people moving forward, get them inspired, get them into action. And uh, that's our commitment. That's why we do what we do. So, Patrick, we're going to pick up on this conversation at Acre Vancouver um, for those listening to this, uh, we sh we'll probably put the link in the comments, but if you go to raincanada.com, you'll see the link there. Uh, it's going to be a phenomenal event. Uh, the, the real estate investment, uh, summit for investors the whole year. This is it. It happens once a year and it's happening next weekend in Vancouver. So Vancouver looking forward to uh, sharing the stage with you, Patrick, and looking forward to, uh, having fun over there. Now get out there. Don't be depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, folks. Thanks buddy.